Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another Double Masters 2022 collector box. I've opened up two of these on the channel and both were amazing. If you haven't seen those videos, pause and click the links at the top to watch those openings as I'm going to be revealing some of what we saw in those boxes today. And with that, let's go ahead and get this one going. All right, so here we are looking at our Double Masters 2022 collector box. Fully sealed and intact. So let's go ahead and open this one up and pull out our four little packs. There we go. All right. Now, just to show you, here are the two boxes that I opened up previously on the channel, and here is this one. You'll notice that all of the numbers from the cases are different. And in these two boxes over here on this side, I was able to pull these two textured foils. So I'll try and zoom in a little bit here. So you can see there both uh, the numbers 573 and 574. They are the textured foils. They look amazing. And now we're gonna try and get a third one. All right, so enough of the past. Let's dive into the present and see if I can pull off a miracle. Pack one. All right, so we're gonna start things off with a Tuscard Captain, a Bloodwater Entity, a Rampant Growth, Burning Tree Emissary, an Eye Blight's Ending, Wall of Omens, Jeskai's Charm. All right, and now we're gonna see uh, two borderless uh, non-foils. So we're gonna start off with a Lightning Bolt and a Silentia Sanctuary. Then we're gonna see a Spell Pierce and a Golgari Rot Farm. And now we're going to be into our rares. So this is going to be a rare from the main set. We're going to see Rafika the Many. Trying not to reveal what's behind here. All right. And then we get a Marchesa of the Black Rose. Decent hit here from the set. And then our foil etched is going to be an Ushlot the Hate Seed uh, rare. And we're going to see a borderless uh, foil uh, concordant car crossroads coming in. And then we got ourselves a bear and a knight token. So just get our piles established here. All right, pack two. Of note, in both boxes, it was pack two where I got the foil X card. I'm going to lose it if we get one in here. I'll be happy. All right, Liliana's Elite, Is It's Charm, Dark Dweller Oracle, Militia Bugler, Chronicle of Heroes, uh, League Guild Mage, Crackling Doom. All right, then we're going to see a Cassili Pride Mage, a Blood Braid Elf, and then we get ourselves a Rampant Growth in Foil, followed by a Gruel Tough. All right, and then we see Surgical Extraction coming in from the main set as our rare. And then we get an Oracle of Moldaya as our borderless rare. Very cool to see that. Followed by a Bring to Light in Foil Etched. And we get a Blood Forged Battle Axe in Extended Art Foil with a Vampire and an Elemental. All right, so we didn't do it. Uh, at least not in pack two. Got two more packs to go here. Jeskai Elder, Agony Warp, Monastery Swift Spear, Coiling Oracle, Perforous Emissary, Civic Saber, River Hoopo, Demir Aqueduct, Azorius Chancery, Demir Aqueduct again in foil, Cassili Pride Mage. All right, and then we get ourselves an Anger of the Gods coming in from the main set, a couple of bucks, and a Coligan's Command. And then we see a uh, Mizzix of is Magus coming in as a mythic. And then a fo uh, foil borderless damnation as our full art with a boar treasure. All right. So not too exciting. This box is so far a letdown. Um, there is one pack remaining. So we've got a deadly recluse, a Tuscard captain, bloodwater entity, rampant growth, Burning Tree Emissary, Arachnus Spinner, Lightning Bolt, 
Then we got our Monastery Swift Spear, our Is It Boiler Works, Young Pyromancer, a Simic Growth Chamber, an Aether Vial, very nice hit from the main set. And then a Glimpse of the Unthinkable, or Glimpse of Unthinkable. And then a Skullbriar, uh, the Walking Grave coming in here. And then we see a Mana Drain. So that's going to be our Mythic uh, from the main set and Extended Art. Very nice to see that. Very cool card. Uh, very happy about that. And then we get ourselves a Boar and the Soldier. All right. Now, since we didn't hit it, I'm going to pull out another one. Now, this one came from the exact same case. So there we go. 21, uh, 3, 2, 1. So we're going to go one more time and see if we can't make it happen. Really want to get in three videos, three foil etch cards. So this may be cheating uh, by adding an extra box, but fingers crossed. All right, so Titan Strength, Drake Mangler, uh, Wing Steed, Gnarlback Rhino, Seeker Squire, Bant's Charm, Marauder. All right, then we're going to see, oh, making a mess, hang on one second. Don't want to damage these cards, but I did mess up the pile. And again, these are all mine, so got to take care of them. All right, Monastery Swift Spear. Back at it. Is it Spoiler Works? Young Pyromancer. Wall of Omens. Emrakul. Very awesome to see that from the main set here. Uh, so this is going to be uh, at least a $20 hit in non-foil. And then the Full Monty Dockside Extortionist coming in here. Awesome hit right there. Followed by a Judith uh, Scourge Diva in our Foil Etched. And a Tefiri's Protection in Foil Borderless with a Bear and a Knight. So I'm going to move our Dockside over here. All right, so that was a really good pack with Tefiri, the Dockside, uh, coming in there. Um, might have been a $100 pack, an $85 pack. All right, so we got a Martial Glory, Stormfleet Pyromancer, uh, Fireblade Artist, Lava Coil, Pillage, Muldrifter, Spawning, and we get a Seeker of the Way as our first Borderless, with a Basilica as our second, an Unearth, a Blood Artist, and we get ourselves a Backdraft Hellkite coming in from the main set, followed by a Battle Forged, uh, bl Blood Forged Battle Axe. Then a Culligan's Command, and an Assassin's Trophy coming in in Foil Borderless there at the end. All right, two packs to go. Even Initiate, Bonkin, Gambit, Call, Carrier Thrall, Tower Gargoyle, Cold Steel Heart. Then we got ourselves a Spell Pierce uh, with a Demir Aqueduct hiding in the back. Burning Tree Emissary, Simic Growth Chamber, and then a Sensei's Divining Top coming in from the main set. Awesome to see that. Very good hit. Then we get a Gifts Ungiven. And then we get the Mimeoplasm. That's him right back there. And then we get a Dragon Lord Dramoka coming in at Foil Borderless. Very nice to see that. Good mythic hit. All right. Last pack from Double Masters, or at least Collector's Pack. And certainly the last one I'm going to open on this video. Um, I only had two boxes from this case. So, last chance. Traveler's Amulet, Martial Glory, Pyromancer, Artist, Growth Chamber, Summer Bloom. Good hit. Double Rampant Growth, but in the middle is a Muldrifter. All right, then we get to see a Terminate. All right, and from the main set, our first rare is a Boar Tusk Liege. Not a great hit. Followed by another Mana Drain, so this time in non-foil. And then a Master Biomancer in foil, foil etched. And then a Grand Arbiter in borderless foil with an elemental in the back. And there you have it, folks. That's two boxes. Um, I'll be back in just a moment with the MTG box analysis. Okay, we're back. Everything's been sorted and inventoried. Now let's get into the MTG box analysis. In case you didn't already know, the Double Masters 2022 set contains a total of 577 cards. 
332 are traditionally framed cards, 80 are borderless, 160 are foiled etched, and all of these are either rare or mythic. And then there's a new treatment for this set called textured foil, of which there are five mythics. And in case you didn't see the pattern in the box, collector boosters do not contain non-foil cards from the main set. The only non-foil cards you will see in these packs are borderless. Here's a look at the cards that we saw today. The foils are represented in orange, the non-foils in green, and the set in gray as our baseline. Based on the data, we can see that these boxes contain 12 non-foil and 12 foil borderless cards each. They also contain one foil etched per pack for a total of eight for the two boxes. This is all to be expected as this is the standard build of these collector packs. The only variation here will be if you get a textured foil. It replaces one of the borderless foils. The other variable is the rare to mythic ratio. In these two boxes, we saw at least one foil in every category of the standard frame cards. The distribution was a little bit skewed with blue only having three cards and red having 12 across the two boxes. This is a variance of 4x. Now let's take a look at the four collector boxes opened on the channel combined. As you can see, the distribution across the main set is still pretty skewed with blue only having seven foils and red having 23. This is a variance of 3x. In the borderless category, we've seen 48 non-foils as expected, 46 foil borderless, two less because in two of my boxes I did open textured foils, and finally, we've seen 16 foil etched. In the two boxes we opened today, we saw 21 unique non-foil and 21 unique foil borderless cards, which accounts for about 26% of the borderless cards in the set. Only opening eight packs, we saw eight foil etched. Luckily, none of them were duplicates, allowing us to see 5% of the 160 foil etched cards in the set. From the main set, we saw 64 unique standard frame foil cards, giving us 19% coverage. When we combine the four collector boxes, coverage of the set looks like this. From the main set, we've now seen 91 of the 332 standard frame cards in foil, giving me 27% coverage of the main set. In the foil borderless space, we've only seen 43% of the cards so far. In the foil space, we've done a little bit better with 46% coverage. So far, none of the foil etch cards have been repeats despite opening four boxes from three different cases, which means that we've now seen 10% of the cards. And finally, I've been extremely lucky to have pulled 40% of the five textured foils. Pivoting to coverage by rarity, in today's two boxes, we saw five common non-foil borderless cards. We also saw eight uncommons, six rares, and two mythics. In the foil etch space, we saw seven rares and a single mythic. In the foil space, we saw 38 commons, 24 uncommons, 12 rares, and four mythics. In total, we saw 25 rares and seven mythics today. If we combine all four collector boxes, coverage by rarity looks like this. Feel free to pause and review the combined numbers. If we include duplicates, we've now seen 52 rares and 12 mythics in all 16 collector packs. Out of the 120 cards we saw today, three of the non-foil borderless cards were duplicates, and three different foil borderless cards were also duplicates. From the main set, seven cards were repeated twice. If we look at all four collector booster boxes combined, duplication increases to a total of 60 cards across the 240 cards in the four collector boxes, which means that 25% of the cards in these four boxes were repeats. Unfortunately, only one of these 60 duplicates was of any substantial value. Now let's take a look at how this set is trending. Here's a look at all the cards in Double Masters 2022 and the prices that they were on release day July 8th. The prices shown are for the non-foil version of the cards. On release day, the set had 12 cards valued over $100, and today that number is one less at 11. The set also had 22 cards valued over $50 on release day and still does today. And finally, in the $10 to $50 category, there used to be 104 cards, and now there's only 96. Yes, there's been a cooling off since release day, but this is normal. Pre-release prices are always inflated. I'd give it another week, and we'll see what this set is actually worth. On release day, all the cards in the set in their non-foil form were valued at $7,513. 
today, those same cards are valued at $6,624, a drop of $889. Here's a look at the top 10 movers down from a dollar perspective. Four of the five textured foils are down, with Liliana being the most with a 55% drop from her release day price. Both fancy emeralds are down more than 40%, and even the foil etched Imperial Seal has come back 32%. These 10 cards have dropped to a combined $829.53 since release. In total, 103 cards have dropped 50% off their pre-release prices, but keep in mind that this includes all the 10 cent cards that dropped to a nickel. But don't worry, it's not all bad news. Here's a look at the top 10 movers up from a dollar perspective. As you can see, the textured foil Kozilek is up 6%, and the two Dockside Extortionists are up over 20%. The biggest mover upward was the Borderless Imperial Seal, which moved up $36.82. The Borderless Sensei's Divining Top moved up the most percentage-wise with 49%. In total, 34 cards have increased 50% from their pre-release prices, but again, this does include all cards, including the cards under a dollar. Here's a look at what we saw in these two collector booster boxes. In the non-foil space, we only saw three big hits, including the Borderless Oracle of Moldiah at $13.21, the Borderless Mana Drain at $51.76, and the Borderless Dockside Extortionist at $69.32. We also saw four cards valued over $5, three of which were foil etched, as well as 16 cards valued over $1. The remaining nine cards were all under a buck. In the foil space, we had nine big hits out of 88 cards, which is pretty good. We saw a Borderless Assassin's Trophy, an Aether Vial, an Emrakul of Aeon's Torn, a Borderless Damnation valued at $26.63, a Borderless Dragonlord Dramoka valued at $27.54, the Borderless Tefiri's Protection at $28.26, Sensei's Divining Top at $30.46, a Borderless Concordant Crossroads at $59.32, and the Borderless Mana Drain at $93.87. We also saw three foils valued over $5 and 19 foils valued over $1. The remaining 57 foils were all under a buck. So how did these boxes perform? Well, I purchased both boxes at the same time through a Patreon agreement for $279.50 each. Today we opened two collector boxes with four packs each containing 15 cards apiece. So in total, we saw 120 cards. In the non-foil borderless space, we saw $170.83 of value. The eight foil etch cards added another $36.64. The foils from the main set added $96.07. And the foil borderless cards added $300.48. And finally, the tokens added $5.39. So in total, we saw $609.41 in card value which is a gain of $50.41. This equates to 109% of the box prices being returned in value. So how has my journey with Double Masters 2022 collector boxes been? In addition to today's boxes, I've purchased two other collector boxes through Amazon at different times during the pre-order window. I paid about $242 each for those, which means I'm into collector boxes for about $1,043.98. So far on the channel, I've opened up four boxes and we've cracked 16 packs to see 240 cards. Just think about that for a minute. $1,000 for 240 cards. That comes out to $4.35 a card. What's the profit margin on that, wizards? Anyway, in the non-foil borderless space, we've now seen $301.52 in value. The 16 foil etch cards added another $337.13 in value, thanks mostly due to the Imperial Seal I opened in box one. The traditionally framed foils from the main set added another $132.55 in value, and the foil borderless cards added $488.70. The tokens added $16.56, and the two textured foils I open in box one and two are currently valued at $540.74, which means I've now seen a total of $1,817.20 in card value, which is a gain of $733.22 over the price I paid, which equates to 174% of the price 
being returned in card value. Not bad at all. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more MTG box analysis. Until next time, do something amazing.